Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this Kahoot, I'm going to be going over cardiac and blood disorders. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel. How can you do that? Like this video, you're gonna love it, so do it now. Press that thumbs up so you don't forget. Press that red notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Also, don't forget, I'm now offering NGN NCLEX review sessions on my web. Well, you can book on my website. I'm offering that, and I also have audio lessons available on my website. So go check out nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, guys, let's get started. Cardiac and blood disorders. A myocardial infarction is commonly a result of, is it hypertension? Heart failure, coronary artery disease, or diabetes? What do you guys say? Good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer, and it's a coronary, it's coronary artery disease. So basically, what happens, I want you to think about it. The coronary arteries, those are the vessels that actually feed the heart. Just like all your other organs need to be perfused, so does the heart muscle. So if the coronary arteries, if there's some type of obstruction going on, guess what? That heart muscle itself is not going to get the oxygenated blood, vitamins, nutrients, minerals that it needs to survive. Blank is a risk factor for coronary artery disease that can be controlled with diet, exercise, and medication. Is it diabetes, age, gender, or race? Let me move this out of the way. And the correct answer is diabetes. So guys, you have modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors. So um, modifiable risk factor, diabetes is one of them. You don't have to be a diabetic in 99.9% .9 of the cases. So um, eating right, exercising, having a healthy lifestyle, decreased sodium, all of those can decrease your risk of coronary artery disease. Now, there are certain risk factors you have no control over. Those are non-modifiable risk factors, such as age. The older that you get, the higher your risk factor for coronary artery disease, because the longer time you've had on earth to be clogging those arteries. Gender, being a male, that is going to increase your risk for coronary artery disease. Race, being of um, African-American descent, being Black, that increases your risk factor for coronary artery disease. And those are non-modifiable risk factors. You can't change that. You have no control over it. But diabetes, you do. What is found in the left fifth intercostal space midclavicular line? Is it the radial pulse, the popliteal pulse, the brachial pulse, or the apical pulse? Very good. It's the apical pulse. Um, just like it says, if you go to that left intercostal space, so um, right here between the bones, you go down fifth spaces, midclavicular line, you're going to get your uh, apical pulse. Which heart sound is not normally heard in a functioning heart? S1, S2, S3, or S4? which heart sound is not normally heard in a functioning heart.
The correct answer, very good, is S4. So S1 and S2, that's your love dub. You know when you listen to the heart and hear love dub, love dub, love dub. Your love is your S1, your dub is your S2. Now S3, you know, we don't, we hear this like in, for example, we may hear this in um, um, in an athlete or someone with CHF, but we'll still see this in the normal functioning heart. Like for example, if it's a patient with, um, that's an athlete, but that S4, you do not hear that in the normally functioning heart. Pernicious anemia is the body's inability to absorb what? Is it vitamin B6? Is it iron? Is it vitamin B12 or magnesium? Pernicious anemia. Okay, guys, correct answer, vitamin B12. So that vitamin um, B12, you need that for like red blood cell formation and nerve function is very, um, in, vitamin B12 is very important, especially for the nerve cells. So um, if you have pernicious anemia, you won't be able to absorb it. And guess what? You can't survive without vitamin B12 for, for long. You will not survive. You will die. It's not even a question of if, it's a question of when. Which surgery takes, uh, excuse me, which surgery places a patient at high risk for pernicious anemia? Is it amputation? Is it gastrectomy? Is it hysterectomy? Or is it autoplasty? Very good, it's gastrectomy. So let's talk about this. The two most important things you need in order to absorb vitamin B12, remember that vitamin B12 that I just told you is very important for, for nerve function. Well, in order for it to be absorbed, you have to have intrinsic factor and gastric acid. So if a patient has had a gastrectomy, they've had part of their stomach removed, guess what they've also had removed? Intrinsic factor, because that you find it in the stomach. So with decreased intrinsic factor, gastric acid, patient may not be able to absorb vitamin B12. And guess what? I just told you, you need it in order to live. So if a patient um, gets pernicious anemia from that gastrectomy, they have to get vitamin B12, um, what's the word I'm looking for, As from an outside source, Okay. For the rest of their life, for the rest of their life, they're going to have to take vitamin B12 supplements or they're going to die. Select all that apply. Lupus is more commonly seen in what? Select all that apply. Is it men, women, blacks, whites, geriatrics, young to middle adulthood? Lupus, what do you say? Okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, we see lupus much more in women than we do in men. It's uh, more prevalent in blacks than it is in whites. And we see it around young to middle adulthood. So what happens is lots of women, they won't even know that they have lupus until their first pregnancy. And it's during the pregnancy that they're having all these complications. And then they find out they have lupus because um, that pregnancy um, was a trigger for the lupus that was kind of, um, for lack of a better word, just saying remaining dormant in their body. Okay. So being a woman, being black and around young to middle adulthood. What's the most common cause of death for patients with lupus? Is it myocardial infarction? Is it stroke? Is it kidney failure or is it hepatitis?
very good. It's, it's kidney failure. And for those of you who've been following me for a couple years, you know, my sister, she died from lupus and that's what happened, kidney failure. And she ended up passing. Um, absolutely. Um, in lupus, we absolutely do. They, we see MIs, we see stroke, we see incidences of hepatitis, but the most common cause for death is from the kidney shutting down the patient going into kidney failure. What's a classic sign of lupus? Is it the butterfly rash, vomiting, weight loss, or dysuria? The classic sign of lupus. Very good, the butterfly rash. And on the next slide, hopefully I have it here. Let's see what it looks like. There you go. You see this rash, how it's on the bridge of the nose and then it's on the cheek. So it's spread like a butterfly. And so it's known as the butterfly rash. And that is the classic sign and symptom of lupus. And unfortunately, lupus affects every single organ system of the body from, you know, the integumentary, the genital, the urinary, cardiac, every sy single system you can affect it. Um, this autoimmune disorder is very harsh. I'm going to have to do a teaching on lupus by itself because there's so much to cover. True or false? Patient with leukemia should eat a diet high in raw fruits and vegetables. Is that true or is it false? Very good, it's false. So that patient with leukemia is already at high risk for infection, right? We are trying to eliminate any pathogens, any bacteria, so they cannot have any raw fruits, any raw vegetables, any raw meats, any raw foods, period. Everything has to be cooked. We gotta make sure we kill off all the bacteria before that patient ingests it because we don't want them to get sick. Two people with beta thalassemia trait have blank chance of having a child with thalassemia major. So mom and dad have the trait. What are the chances that they will produce a child with the disorder? Is it 10%, 25%, 50%, or 75%? Wow, 30% of you guys chose 50% and it's not guys, it is 25%. This is important and Clex expects you to know this. Um, when it comes, by the way, um, beta thalassemia, this is an autosomal recessive disorder. So when two parents have the trait, they have a one in four chance of producing a child with the disease. And the same thing is with like uh, sickle cell, with cystic fibrosis, with Tay-Sachs disease, all of those are autosomal recessive disorders. When both parents have the trait, they have a one in four, a 25% chance of producing a child um, with the disorder. Decreased levels of WBCs, RBCs, and platelets are consistent with which diagnosis? Is this HIV AIDS, sickle cell anemia, aplastic anemia, or iron deficiency anemia? Very good, aplastic anemia. So let's talk about the other choices. I'll come back to aplastic anemia. So you guys know what HIV and AIDS is. You know that in that, the WBCs are severely decreased. In sickle cell anemia, excuse me, the RBCs, which are supposed to be nice discoid shape, they become sickle. 
and so perfusion severely decreased. In iron deficiency anemia, the patient's iron levels is no, low, and that affects the RBC and hemoglobin production, right? Now, let's talk about aplastic anemia. In aplastic anemia, the bone marrow, what's caused by, what causes this is bone marrow damage. Maybe it could be trauma, it could be um, exposure to poisons or radiation, whatever the cause is, it, there's bone marrow suppression. And remember, the bone marrow is what's responsible for making your blood cells. So WBCs are low, you're going to be concerned about infection. RBCs are low. You're going to be concerned about anemia. Platelets low. You're going to be concerned about that patient bleeding out. The correct answer is aplastic anemia. Select all that applies. Beta thalassemia occurs primarily in people of which descent? Select all that apply. Is it Italian? Is it Greek? African? Asian? Middle Eastern? East Indian? Select all that apply. Beta thalassemia. All of them. All of them. There um, is a higher occurrence of beta thalassemia in people with Italian, Greek, African, Asian, Middle Eastern, and East Indian descent. Hemophilia A results from a deficiency of what? Is it hemoglobin? Is it platelet antigens? Is it antibodies? Or is it factor eight? Hemophilia A. My nieces are in the corner arguing over their answer choices. Okay, factor eight, very good. Factor eight is a type of clotting factor that the patient does not have. And so these patients with hemophilia A, we tend to see them um, if they're bleeding out because they don't have the clotting factor, it tends to be like in the joints and it's very important. Safety is a very important issue when it comes to the patients with hemophilia. So you have to teach them to be careful. If they're riding a bike, they got to wear their safety equipment. They cannot play contact sports. Go play golf, go bowling, but you can't play basketball or soccer or any type of sport where you can be injured, where someone can harm you because you're already at risk for bleeding. Last question. Neutropenia occurs when the absolute neutrophil count falls below blank reflecting a severe risk for infection. Is it 500, 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000? What do you guys think? Okay, guys, so the correct answer is a thousand. And so let's talk about this. Um, the normal neutrophil count is like 1500 to 7,000. Once this falls below a thousand, that patient's at severe risk for infection. Now, I'm proud of you guys because I thought that uh, the most of you guys were going to choose 5,000 because I thought you were going to confuse neutrophil with your WBCs, you know, your WBCs are 5,000 to 10,000. The neutrophil, which is type of uh, white blood cell, the normal count for that, again, like I say, it's around 1,500 to 7,000. But once you hit less than 1,000, patient is at severe risk for infection. All right, that's it. Let's see how you guys did. Third place, Aaliyah. Good job, Aaliyah. Second place, Miss Jackson. First place, drum roll, <laughs> neutrophil. Okay, neutrophil is number one. Wilson and Kiki are runners up. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comment section what you'd like to see me cover next. I have a running list and I'm trying to make these videos as soon as I can for you. Please don't forget, I'm um, 
offering NCLEX reviews. You can go to my website and book a review today. You can also get audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching. You guys catch me on the next video.